This is a major advantage of tripping, spacing out without drugs. You can space away out there spiritually into remote, esoteric, behind the fails, jhana realms, awareness realms, without any loss of control about your earthbound reality. So I might as well make the point here. Everything I am describing since the day I arrived in the Tibetan monastery is drug free. Okay, there might have been a little caffeine in the yak butter tea, but you know what I mean. Don't get me wrong, I'm not putting down the wise use of entheogens. But it's essential to make this unequivocal distinction. All my days in the Tibetan monastery are absolutely 100% drug free. When I arrived at the monastery, I had like about eight beautiful spliffs of Darjeeling's finest marijuana in my Turkish cigarette case. <laughs> And as I was falling asleep, I was so exhausted and out of breath from the altitude in the border jumping scene that I had nudged the cigarette case off the window ledge of Dorothy's bedroom and then forgot about it. I woke up and, you know, well, the next morning when I set off to get the apple tree seedlings, when the Tibetan cook, with his fingers on one hand, uh, brought us our tea and flatbread, uh, the, the cigarette case was there. <laughs> so happy to find it, but not, no joints inside. Who knows? Maybe the other monks were puffing away in the deep woods. I have no idea, but I, I, I took it as a sign that my time here should be absolutely drug-free. They didn't say anything. They didn't steal the cigarette case. You know. All right, so in the temple attic, my first five or six days meditating, my spirit leaves my body, although I'm faintly in touch with it through the golden cord, and eventually my spirit lifts above Chitre Monastery, above the Himalayas, and uh, above the earth. My spirit ascends uh, to about where the moon orbits the earth. I look back, see the earth. Uh, then my spirit stops and I relax and reside. And My spirit sees myself as a light body of myself. Yeah. Um, with this difference, my light body is composed of zillions of particles of colored light, sparks of light. And I couldn't clap hands with this light body because my hands would just pass right through each other. Well, soon uh, I learned I could welcome and produce the light bodies of my friends in space. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Um, for example, uh, here comes my good Syracuse University buddy and co-conspirator who gave me his last 50 bucks to make the trip to India, uh, John. And he's on his Harley motorcycle <laughs> in space out by where the moon is. And we have a ride of a lifetime on his motorcycle. <laughs> wow, was that fun. And sometimes I would drop down uh, I would go all around the earth and drop down into the homes, into the living rooms, or wherever they were, my, my beloved friends. They couldn't see me or hear me, but I could like, see and hear everything going on. <laughs> like mom and dad, oh, our baby's in India. Oh, will he ever come home? You know, that kind of thing. Oh. Well, to conclude... Uh, this session, which is all, this is a whole story, so it's just a big warm-up until Goddess Earthy appears. Um, I learned to visualize myself kind of like a dirigible, like a blimp with various cords tethering it down. My spirit wants to float up, but I have these cords attached to the blimp, me, and I can't float up until I cut the cords. Well, what are the cords made out of? <laughs> you know? Uh, desires and fears. 
Yeah, and what do I cut them with? Determination, integrity, authenticity, enthusiasm to find out the truth of the universe and myself. And um, for instance, let's give you some examples. Uh, if I ha wanted to smoke a bunch of hashish with some zadus, you know, golden memories, uh, I had to cut that cord or could not float up. Or, oh, if I had a sexual fantasy to have a wild fuck with Dorothy, I had to cut that out. Or I could not ascend in awareness. I developed a kind of automatic letting go mechanism whenever a fear or desire tethered me to the earth and my earth body. And wow, I ran with this to the nth degree until I had no concern whatsoever how I appeared to the other monks or anybody. No more need to look cool or whatever. And well, uh, even a madman attacking me and, and thrusting a knife into my chest, killing me, no fear. Wiped out all fears of any possible action on earth, any possible desire on earth, and... Wow, did I ever rock it up. Cape Canaveral, Kennedy Space Center, I'm talking Tibetan launch pad. <laughs> Buggy in the tropics, yeah. And out of this world.